So we've got our electric car together. We replaced the original gasoline engine with an electric motor by connecting it to the original transmission with an adapter plate and a coupler. We installed batteries, we cabled them up together, and we hooked up a battery charger. It looks like we're ready to go for a ride. But before we do, let's review what actually happens when we turn the car on. Now to start, make sure your charging cord is unplugged. Before we're ready to ride, if you've been working on your car recently, you would have disabled the power, which may have been a quick battery disconnect, it may have been manually removing one of the battery cables, or the main fuse. Whatever you do to safely work on your car, you got to make sure to hook that back up before you're ready to go. The other thing we want to make sure of is that the parking brake is on and that the transmission is neutral. Then we're ready to stick in the key and turn the car on. So the very first thing, make sure our parking brake is on and that the transmission is in neutral. On the bottom left we see we've got our vacuum gauge. On the bottom right we've got our 12 volt battery gauge. When I turn the key we'll hear the car beep and the very first thing we'll see in here is that this will kick on and the vacuum pump will start going so we'll hear that right away too. And our vacuum starts pumping up. We tapped off 12 volt power from the original wire that went to the ignition coil. So this now supplies power to the vacuum pump, the pre-charged resistor relay, and 12 volts to the controller. When we turn the car on, one of the first things we're going to hear is the vacuum pump running. At the same time, the relay for the pre-charged resistor gets power, it kicks on, and it allows some of the power here to flow through that pre-charge resistor and out to the controller to pre-charge the capacitors. 12 volts of power goes to the controller through the red wire. It powers up the green power light and the yellow logic light both light up. It pauses for a few seconds and then when it's ready it sends 12 volts of power out through the yellow connection up to the main contactor. When the coils of the main contactor gets energized by 12 volts from the controller, it energizes and snaps shut. And now you're ready to drive. Okay, now the very first thing, um, I always start in neutral, put my foot on the brake, take the parking brake off, and just put it in gear. Uh, the gear, in some ways, almost doesn't matter. I can actually start from a dead stop in fifth gear. Let's just roll forward a little bit here. But of course, that's not going to be your most efficient gear. Right outside my house, it's 45 miles an hour. So we're just going to use third gear. And I'm checking for traffic, and off we go. You can see how the amperage ramps up. It takes a lot of power to accelerate from a dead stop, so that amperage is gonna go up quite a bit. Now I'm gonna make that right-hand turn into the 45 mile per hour zone. You can. You can see the amperage goes up pretty quick. Um, I'm accelerating. It's actually a little uphill right there. And I'm at 30 miles an hour and accelerating right now. Now the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is once you get kind of to the speed and power that you're looking for, you can back off the accelerator just a little bit. Now something that's pretty cool about this electric car is even though I have a manual transmission, I can get away with shifting a lot less. I can pull away from a stop in any gear, including fifth, and the electric motor has a broader range of RPMs than the equivalent gasoline engine would be. Most of the time I just drive this car around in third gear. If I'm only going to be in 25 mile per hour zones like I am in the city here, um, I'll just drive it in second. That way I have better acceleration away from stop signs. It pulls uh, less amps um, and it, it, it lets me go fast enough. Uh, up ahead here we've got a stop sign. And if you look at the ammeter, I'm using zero energy. So when you come to a stop or when your foot's not on the accelerator, you don't use any energy whatsoever in an electric car. Here I'm pulling away from a stop. You can see the amperage increases, but then once I get going, it's gonna drop back down. And once I'm at the speed I wanna be going, a lot of times I completely let off the accelerator. 
another thing that you're going to notice here is that when I use a lot of amps, the voltmeter is going to drop. So I'm going to intentionally accelerate uh, hard here, pull a lot of amps so you can see that on the voltmeter. And I'm doing this right now with the vehicle in a somewhat discharged state, just so that you can see that. What happens is as your batteries get used up, you're going to have a lower and lower voltage. And also when you accelerate hard, you're going to see that your voltage is going to drop much quicker. The voltage that you have when you're under load, like when you're accelerating hard, is going to dip deeper than it would be otherwise. So most of the time, just driving along on the flat, I can cruise around oh, somewhere between 50 and 75 amps. Remember, it, it takes a lot more energy to go uphill, and it takes a lot more energy to pull away from a stop than it does to just keep rolling along. So you always want to roll along as much as you can, just for range, so that you can uh, go as far as you possibly can. Other things to maximize your range are you're going to want to make sure to top off the battery anytime you get a chance. You're going to want to make sure that your uh, tire air pressure is where it's supposed to be. And you also want to make sure to check your brakes, make sure they're not dragging, uh, adjust the parking brake. Another thing here is that when we accelerate, it's very nice and smooth. Uh, there's no shifting going on at all here. Uh, even in an automatic transmission car, you can still feel the shift points. Well, here I'm not even shifting at all. It's much more like having a continuously variable transmission. Here we go, I'm gliding along at 30 miles an hour, not using a drop of juice. Downshifting I usually do at a stop sign. Like I said, I really don't have to shift that much, but I want to show you how I upshift without a clutch. The problem with the low gears in electric is that you can get to the point where the motor is just spinning really, really, really fast, but the car's not going any faster. You kind of top out your speed. It's sort of like if you pedal as hard as you possibly can on a multi-speed bicycle, but in the lowest gear, you just can't pedal fast enough to get up to the speed you want to be in. So what I'm going to do here is I just let off the accelerator. I take it out of gear, so we're in neutral. We just leave it there for a moment. And then we just push it up into third gear. That's it. That's all you have to do for shifting in a clutchless electric car. And right now we're going uphill and accelerating. We're driving an electric car! Whee! See that? That's an EV grin. <laughs> and here's my house. So we'll signal and get off the main road. Thanks for coming along on my electric car ride. Now this car is a hatchback and there's a couple of things that I really kind of like. Oh, there's our screw up wheel right now. Oh, it's locked. This is a London, London pattern anvil, and uh, it has a Pritchell hole here and a Hardy hole here. If we slit that in the middle with a, uh, that chisel I have, you can make some really, really nice, almost perfect fits using this very old process. What we're going to do is we're going to make a, uh, a link for a chain. square it up and just continue to twist and it's going to go together and create this uh, wonderful handle. I'm going to drive that down.
So you want to build your own electric motorcycle, but you don't know where to start. That's okay, that's why I'm here. <laughs>